way. And in studying that literature, I began to be aware that there were certain commonalities to them all, and that we were really talking about something deeper than those words, communism, fascism, Nazism, socialism, liberalism, whatever you want to call it. And I realized that we're kind of living in a world that's like the Tower of Babel. We use these words, and people get into fierce arguments and disagreements over the meanings of those words because they don't agree on the meanings. You've got this uh, dichotomy of communists versus uh, fascists, and they fight wars, don't they? You think they're on the opposite side, but when you examine communism and fascism or Nazism, you think, not an awful lot of difference between those two. And you get big arguments between capitalists, so-called, and socialists, so-called, and liberals and conservatives and Democrats and Republicans, and, and all of these words are fl fl flying around, and nobody really can define what they mean. They have an emotional understanding of them. But when you ask them to define the word, it seldom agrees with the dictionary definition. And even if it does, it, it doesn't have any depth to it. People respond emotionally, depending on how they feel about it. Is it good or is it bad? And yet they can't really define it. And for there is a very good reason, is because there's no difference in essence between most of these apparently opposing points of view. And I'm going to talk about that today. I discovered that in